If you watched my last video, you know that I gave a very detailed tour of all of my aquariums. We started up upstairs in my office, worked our way down to my living room, and then down here finally to the fish room, which is on the basement level. Now down here in this room, I've got 23 or 24 aquariums and I've got several more upstairs. Uh, overall, I've got a little bit more than 30 uh, systems running. And I got a lot of questions, uh, DMs, uh, emails, uh, comments in videos, asking a little bit more about this fish room. So I thought what I would do today is kind of give you a behind the scenes tour of uh, what we got, what we've got going on here, so you guys can kind of see what it's like, um, you know, keeping all these aquariums and kind of how everything's filtered, lit, uh, heated, all that kind of stuff. So we'll do a little bit of a behind the scenes tour of the fish room. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now a little bit about this fish room. We kind of talked about um, the number of tanks. Down here, I've got uh, all freshwater, brackish, and saltwater aquarium. So we've got a mixture of all different types of tanks down here. And the overall dimensions, because um, people ask me all the time, like how big is this room? Sometimes it looks very large on a thumbnail or on camera, um, or it might look smaller in other areas. So um, from the front, to the back, so from behind where you are right now, behind the camera, all the way to that back wall is a little bit over 16 feet. So that is pretty substantial, that's a good size room. And then from this wall to my left, your right, over to that wall, it's 12 feet. And then um, as you can see right here, there's kind of a bend in the wall. Uh, where the wall comes out and then the room actually extends back that way. And that section is 14 feet uh, from that wall there to the other side. So it's pretty good space. Um, it's plenty big for having multiple aquariums and if I wanted to stack some more in here, I do have space for a little bit more, but I do like the aesthetic of how this room is set up. Um, now, I did share before uh, the walls are um, acoustic panels. So um, in here, the entire walls are covered in acoustic paneling. So that serves a couple of purposes. One, it really does help in reducing the sound down here. So you don't hear like a lot of noise, not a, you don't hear the pumps and the dehumidifiers, There's not a lot of background noise down here. Um, it's pretty quiet. Um, so that, those uh, panels do a great job of absorbing the sound. They're actually made for like sound recording studios and things like that, people that are doing uh, audio for video. Um, and then they also serve an insulating purpose because they are very heavy duty, they're super thick. They do um, offer a, uh, a layer of insulation, so it does help to keep this room very warm. I know I'm wearing a sweatshirt right Right now, normally I'm down here like in a t-shirt or a tank top and I am quite warm because this room is always 80 degrees. Um, behind the uh, blankets, the, the sound panels, um, we have additional insulation. So there's insulation on the other side of the concrete wall, there's insulation on the other side of this wood wall. And uh, so that also does aid obviously in keeping the temperature in here. Um, now I do keep this room at a constant temperature. Uh, I do heat the room and it's usually right around 80 degrees. Sometimes when it's really cold and we just had a cold snap, which is why I am wearing this uh, hoodie because it is very cold in the house. Um, but uh, right now it's, it's cold outside and the temperature in here will drop to about 78 degrees or so. So still very warm. And then during the warmer months, it might get up to 81, 82 degrees. It doesn't get very hot because this is the basement level and it doesn't get very cold because we have the dehumidifier and because we have all of the insulation. Now, as far as uh, how we filter all the aquariums down here, everything is filtered with air. We have one main air pump and that central air pump sits back behind that uh, little alcove area um, on a shelf and everything is plumbed up in uh, around, the, uh, around the ceiling, around the walls here, and it's all PVC, so it's all hidden. So you can't see the filtration system because it's all hidden behind the panels, which I love. And then we've got the black airline tubing coming through the grommets on those panels and those drop right into the aquarium. So it, it makes it very sleek as far as aesthetics are concerned, which all of you I'm sure very, you know, very much enjoy not seeing a bunch of airlines and pipes on the ceiling like I used to have a long time ago. Um, much, much better, much sleeker, and uh, just kind of does 
um, make it feel more like a finished gallery almost versus like a working fish room. So when my friends come down here, when family comes down here, and when they visit, uh, when I come down here and hang out, it almost feels like I'm in like a public aquarium or a gallery or something where it's very calm and peaceful and aesthetically beautiful. And that is why we have it set up like this. Now with that, because we are um, using a central air system, that means that every aquarium has air running to that. So what that means is I, I power um, my filtration with air and so I use sponge filters. So pretty much every aquarium down here the sole filtration is a sponge filter or multiple sponge filters. If it's a small tank like the 10 gallons in that back column, there might be one medium sized sponge filter. If it's a medium sized tank, there might be two or three sponge filters stacked or a couple different stacks of sponge filters. Um, or it might be a situation where I have a sponge filter and then I also have an air stone for that oxygenation and that gas exchange. Um, I do have two aquariums down here, two systems that do have additional filtration. That would be the Malawi Peacock tank uh, that does have an FX4 canister filter as part of the filtration in addition to the sponge filters. And my Indian Mudskipper Paludarium has the uh, a canister filter that's creating that waterfall effect, but there is also a sponge filter in there. Now, one of the reasons why I love using air is because it's very efficient and very inexpensive, meaning that we can filter, you know, 23, 24 aquariums down here without having to plug anything into the wall. So I just have that one uh, air pump plugged into the wall. It's a linear piston air pump. I have that one pump plugged into the wall and that can provide enough power to filter all of these aquariums so we don't have a bunch of outlets being occupied by different filters. And also it's very easy to maintain and clean sponge filters and they do a really good job of filtration. Now, speaking of electricity and outlets and things like that, we don't have any heaters in any of the aquariums on here. None of the aquariums have heaters. We do only heat the room. Now the dehumidifier that we have running in here does serve two purposes. It does draw moisture out of the air so it doesn't become you know, mildewy or moldy down here. It's a nice, perfect 35% humidity all of the time, which is very nice and very comfortable. So you don't feel that, that hot and sticky feeling that you might have like when you go outside in the summertime. It is very nice down here. But then also the, um, the result of that is that the dehumidifier it exhausts uh, warm air and that warm air heats this room. So I don't have to use any heaters, which also eliminates the necessity of having to have a lot of things plugged in. Another cool thing that we have in this fish room and it, as it relates to heat is I have a couple of vents that do a couple of things. So one of them is connected to my dryer. And this is something that I thought about um, about a year ago as we were entering the winter time. I wanted to harness the heat that the dryer emits when we're doing laundry. And I didn't want that just going outside and getting wasted. Now the, the air from a dryer is very humid, but because we have the dehumidifier in here, it really does kind of turbocharge that dehumidifier. So the warm air that's being exhausted from the dryer, it's, it's warm and hot, hot air essentially, and very humid, is blown into this room through this little vent that I have that warm air heats up this room, that moisture that's in that warm air goes to the dehumidifier. The dehumidifier cranks up, kicks out more warm air. So it really does kind of turbocharge this room when it comes to heating it um, when I want to have that vent open in this fish room to heat it during the cold months. Now I do have the ability to close it off and have that go right outside. There's a little a gate that you can turn. So when I don't want that heat coming in here, if it is very hot, then I can just have it go outside and it doesn't impact the temperature or the humidity in here at all. Additionally, I also installed a heater vent. So we've got our, ma our main HVAC system that heats the house. Well, it's heating. We don't have any AC here in San Francisco, but we've got our main heating system for the house. It's central air. And I, I, uh, I tapped into the air duct and put another vent in this room. And so when the heater kicks on, when it's cold in the morning or cold at night or whatever, it will blow in warm air into this room. And it just kind of does help to keep everything where I want it to be and not worry about any drops in temperature when it's really cold outside. Now we do have some things plugged in, obviously. We've got those couple of filters and we have lights down here. And you can see that we've got lights on every aquarium. These are all LED lights. These are the Phoenix Stingray lights. They are the version one. 
and all of these things that I'm talking about, I will put descriptions down below so that you can see the lights and the filtration, the sponge filters, the air pump. I'll put links of that all down below. Um, but anyway, so we've got the Stingray lights down here and uh, they do a very good job of lighting the aquariums um, and they are relatively inexpensive. Uh, low energy cost because they are LED. They don't emit very much heat at all as well, which is a benefit of having LED lights. And they also are all on Wi-Fi timers, and I'll put a link of that below too. So I have these smart plugs, and the smart plug is plugged into a large power strip, and I can program all of those by my phone. That way the lights come on automatically at a certain time, they go off automatically at a certain time. So even if I'm gone for the weekend, the lights will kick on at let's say 10.30 or 12.30 or 2.30, depending on which tank, which means that the fish have light, the plants have light, and then they go off automatically, let's say at 9 p.m. So if I'm gone on vacation or on uh, away for the weekend, the lights come on, the lights go off without any hiccup. And then also I can control it from my phone. So I could be sitting at my, you know, my friend's house, look at my phone and decide to turn a light on or off. And uh, it does make it very convenient. Um, and then also, let's say I'm filming and I wanna turn something on, I can turn it on right from my phone, vice versa. I do have a security camera down here that is part of that same system. And that's uh, mounted up there so I can look at my uh, phone and I can program my lights and change uh, settings on the lights and then also look in the room and talk to people that are in here. So if my daughter's down here doing a Zoom class or something, I can just say, hey, do you want some lunch or something like that? And she can hear me and talk back. We do have some air circulation down here. So some of you might be worried about me being in an enclosed room that has a basement. We do have some air circulation. There are a couple of holes in the wall where there is some air exchange. Um, the door is not perfectly sealed tight 100%. So, you know, obviously air can come in and out through the um, underneath the door. But I also do have um, some holes in the wall where the uh, drain goes for uh, the sink that we put in. But additionally, I do have some fans in here. So I've got some fans that are in here circulating air all of the time to ensure that we have some airflow uh, and also to ensure that the heat is evenly exchanged throughout this room. Now, one of the things that uh, a lot of people always ask about are the stands in this fish room and how everything is held up. Um, and I've made videos about this before and I'll, and I'll try to embed some video links uh, during this uh, video. But these stands are all concrete blocks. So they're just concrete blocks that are stacked up um, like you would use for building a retaining wall as an example or a foundation. And they have two by fours laid across and the tanks just rest on those two by fours. People often wonder, are those sturdy? They are extremely strong. I've done demonstrations before. I did an earthquake simulation. They are very, very strong. We've gone through earthquakes here in San Francisco with this setup and have not had any issues whatsoever. So once you put that weight on the stand, it really does kind of kind of bolster everything and locks it in place so those concrete blocks do not shift at all. And it also is very handy for you to move things around and uh, make new stands, remove stands, uh, move stuff around. It makes it very, very easy because I've done multiple um, setups in here in the past and you just all you have to do is take the tank off remove the concrete blocks restack them make a new stand and you're good to go so very easy and then i just kind of dressed them up with some plywood and uh, painted them black just to kind of make it blend in with the walls and just kind of add to that aesthetic and then around the corner there's an area that we don't see a whole lot on camera because it's kind of the working area but we have a sink back there which is super handy when i'm doing water changes dumping water uh, we've got a hose over there to refill, um, cleaning equipment, cleaning, you know, bagging up fish, cleaning a filter. So, so easy and uh, very convenient to have that sink right here in this room. And then we do have a little mini fridge with a little mini freezer as well. So I can keep my brine shrimp eggs over there. I can keep my mealworms in the refrigerator. I can keep my frozen blood worms and things like that in the freezer section. And it's just right here. So I don't have to go upstairs and, you know, go in the kitchen and keep blood worms in that freezer. It's all down here, nice and tidy, very accessible. I keep some beneficial bacteria in that fridge. So it's all down here. Um, we've got all of our food stored down here. I'm very fortunate to be sponsored by Extreme Aquatic Foods. So we do have all of their foods here um, stored so that I can very easily uh, grab a, grab a uh, whatever food of choice and feed my aquariums. And then I also am very fortunate to be sponsored by Fritz Aquatics 
and I have all of the chemicals that I store back there in that area as well. Although you can see some of them um, on top of some of my aquariums um, in various uh, shots from videos, um, just because I like to have it accessible. So, but anyway, that's kind of uh, the behind the scenes of this fish room. Um, it's pretty simple, you know, it's just a, a room that we insulated and put some uh, PVC pipes up and, and uh, hooked up a central air system, dropped some sponge filters down to the aquariums, set up some lights and some Wi-Fi timers, and uh, just put together some really nice display aquariums for you guys to enjoy. So hopefully this video was helpful for you in understanding how this fish room operates and all the behind the scenes stuff. Um, if you do have any additional questions, please comment down below. If you have any ambitions or thoughts about building your own fish room, or if you think that there's something that I could do to improve the fish room, please comment down below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. It really does help my channel. If you have not done so already, please subscribe. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.